What the hell is this? I, I come into expecting Dead Rising 4, a series that I love, okay? And all of a sudden, I just get this pile of garbage and just hand it to me for Christmas. Like, was I bad for Christmas? Is this my coal? Is this, is this what I get for being bad during this time of year? I mean, come on. I don't deserve this kind of shit. I've been waiting for this game since its announcement at E3, and... I gotta tell you, it's just a huge disappointment. It's nothing like the original, which is what they were trying to do the entire time, is they were trying to stay true to the original, and it's far from that. But one, we really wanted to go back to our roots. Yeah. We were bringing Frank back, it's the 10th anniversary, and we really wanted to recapture the original magic and bring it up to the level uh, the game systems can do now. It has nothing, no charm for, of the original. It took out psychopaths, guys. The one thing that the game is most famous for is the psychopaths, and they took it out. They even took out the, uh, the time constraints that they had in the game, the three day time constraint because they felt like it would restrict the people's ex exploration. Like, it was so difficult to just kill yourself or, or just wait until one of the missions was done, and then you can do wherever the fuck you want. Even in Off the Record, which was a spinoff of Dead Rising 2 that had uh, Frank West in there, had at least had sandbox mode, which you could do wherever the fuck you want. And in this game, they just, I just don't understand what they were thinking with this game. Frank is cooler, he's tougher, a little wiser. Oh, hey, hold up. Oh, my guys have taken a hit. They need a ride back to Tom. Yeah, sorry. I wish I could. I have things to do. Huh. He really is an asshole. Going back to Maniacs, what do you think when you think of Dead Rising? It's always the boss battles called Psychopaths. In this game now, they're called Maniacs, which are just basically regular people that have gone insane. Although, in the previous games, there were also regular people just way tougher than your average person and a lot more interesting and they had a lot more character development with them than these fucking assholes do. All you have to do is shoot something explosive at them or just shoot anything at them and they'll just stay back and get stun locked forever and then all you have to do is just keep shooting until they're dead. They're easy to deal with. They're not difficult at all. They're not memorable whatsoever. So I don't understand why they switched it off in the first place. They should have kept the psychopaths. What do you see when you go online of top tens in Dead Rising? It's psychopaths, not maniacs. What the fuck's wrong with you, maniacs? Why I love Frank West? He has the biggest balls I've ever seen of any game character. Wow, I've never seen him talking mud before. You know, in a dog show, you definitely take first place. Easy, Fido. How about I take you out for a walk? Come on, puppy. Let's go. You regret this, It's showtime. Come on. Again, they talk about going back to the roots of Dead Rising, yet they still put in combo weapons, which has nothing to do with the original game. The original game was anything that wasn't pinned down was your weapon. And although Dead Rising 2 is still one of my favorite Dead Risings, there was a reason why Chuck was able to put weapons together. is because he was a mechanic. He was good with his hands. And the same thing with Nick. He, he was good with his hands as well. He was able to see two things and put them together and to make an even better thing, which is why he was able to create weapons as well. Frank, on the other hand, was just a photojournalist, so all he ever did was use his camera and whatever wasn't pinned to the ground. That's what stays true to the original, and for some reason he's able to craft these weapons together without any explanation whatsoever. He has the best golf assortment of weapons you've ever seen. And in the original, yes, he did want the story, and that's what he mainly came for in Willamette. But in the end, he saw how many people were getting hurt. He would still try and help them as well as trying to get the story and try to prove that what's going on is a lie and try to get the information out there and try to show what they're truly doing. He wasn't doing it for himself. He wasn't doing it for the fame. He wasn't doing it for the money. He was doing it to help people. And I'm afraid that's how they lose me on how they think Frank is. Yes, he was lighthearted. He was funny. But in the end, he still did care about others. He wasn't a huge asshole. Frank's just an... 
kicking, talking, bullshit mother. Oh, you poor thing. Didn't your mother ever teach you how to use a door? Give me a break. I'll tell you what, next time I'll try and wear some cologne, okay? So I'm gonna calm down a bit and let's rewind a bit and we'll talk about the story. So Frank is back, of course. It takes place one year after the Los Paradidos outbreak, and Frank has taken on an apprentice called Vic. And Vic has gotten some information on people being experimented on in this military base. So they go to check it out and they find out that they're experimenting on people with the old zombie strain. Oh yeah, and by this time, zombieism has been cured, so the disease inside of Frank is no longer there. And this all takes place back in Willamette. They go to the military base and they figure out that there's a bunch of zombies there and that they have overthrown Willamette once again. So it is now up to Frank and Vic to figure out how the zombie outbreak started again and who released the virus once more. Now, this isn't much of a spoiler, but it is something I do have to talk about. It is that they're closing off the actual ending through a paywall. And what I mean by that is that you have to pay $15 to get the actual ending of this game. And when you play the actual ending, or when you play the ending of this game, it is so unsatisfying and it's so what the fuck that I just got extremely mad and just had to take a break from this game for a week. Which is why this review has been taking so long. Also because I wanted to release it on Christmas because, uh, you know, Christmas and this game's the Christmas theme. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, just the, the thought, the thought of them holding the fucking ending of the game behind a paywall just screams to me that they obviously didn't know what the original game was about. The original game, was the original game about holding the ending from you? No, the original game gave us a full game. They gave us a $60 value game. This is trying to squeeze out everything it can from the fucking fan base. It pisses me off. Who's the fucking people that created this game? Guys, thanks for coming. Game makers everywhere think they know what they want to make all the time. And it isn't until you get in front of normal human beings where they start playing the game and you see what they do. And they just want to mess stuff up. They just want to go around and knock stuff around. They want to blow things up. They want to do stupid things in the game. And so it's our mission to create stupidity tools for the user. What the fuck? are you doing Capcom you're giving this game to three people who don't know what the fuck they're doing they've never done anything with Dead Rising before Be beforehand they made shitty ass Kinect games and fucking Halo 4 which I don't really give a fuck about Halo anyways there's only that one guy that did Halo but the rest of it what what the fuck are you doing? You're literally just taking the game that everybody loves. It's basically like taking Devil May Cry and throwing it out the fucking window. Oh wait, you guys already did that. Now you're doing it the fucking Dead Rising? Come on, guys. Okay, now let's just talk about the zombies. The zombies in this game, they're fucking horrible. I got <laughs> Like, what, what happened? Literally in this game, there is like a glitch or something that has to do with their hands or they feel like in order to make this game more difficult, they got to fuck with their hands. But for some reason, when you're anywhere near their fucking hand, it just hurts you. They're not waving their hand around to hit you. Anytime you're near their hands, it just does damage. There's no fucking reason to it. They, it just, it baffles me. You're literally, I think it's just so that zombies have more difficulty when you're trying to kill them in hordes or whatever. Like, they can't have all of them hitting you at once or something like that. You, instead, they have to create artificial difficulty for the game. And, and I, I don't understand why that's there. And it's still there to this very fucking day. So it's either intentional or they just don't know about it. As you're seeing right now, the character models in this game are atrocious. They're really bad. There is no lip sync to them whatsoever. They look lifeless and dead. And I can't believe that they thought this was okay. This is subpar. This is not very good. There are other games with better character models that are out right now at the same price that this game is offering. It's fucking bullshit. For anybody that has this game, who the hell uses stealth mode? I don't. I sure as hell don't. That's why you're never seeing gameplay of me stealthing, because that's stupid. Why would you use that in this game? There's no point of it whatsoever. You're fighting against zombies. Doesn't matter if they can't hear you. There's a bunch of them. They'll see you. And just because there's other people that don't see you means, like, you're not going to die by one hit from them. You can just run up to them, slap them across the face, and that's it. They're dead. 
So there's no reason to have a stealth button in this game because it's not hard whatsoever and it's not a stealth game. So they decided to take out the story co-op mode and in, in, in its place they have put a four player co-op where you do random missions for no reason whatsoever. I feel, I feel like I don't really have a reason to do them and it's just kind of boring really. And some of them are really stupid. There was this one part where we were carrying this really toxic uh, waste thing or whatever. And it was killing us as we were trying to get from point A to point B. And I don't know why they thought that would be fun. Because it's not. None of this is fun. All of this is lazy. And it just screams that they don't want to stick with the original shit. Or they just don't want you to have fun whatsoever. I mean, what is so difficult... To put in like a fucking co-op for the story. I don't understand why they had to do this. It's stupid and boring. None of it is fun. Also, zombies just act like walls for no reason. For some reason, I'm trying to get through them. And then, oh, all of a sudden, I'm getting pushed back as I'm trying to get through them. And it's, it's like, what the fuck? They're not that difficult to push over. They shouldn't be that difficult to push over because they're, they're fucking rotten flesh. And all you have to do is tip them over and they should be falling apart. So I don't understand what the fuck's going on with this game. My favorite part of the game, though, is when you use a car to run over a maniac and they can't get up because you're right on top of them. So you just get out of the car and you shoot them to death. It's so easy. Also, who doesn't mind a bouncing car here and there? I heard they're really fun, especially when you're trying to do something like go off a cliff and try to get into another section. That's really fun, right? Especially when it fucks you up. Man, these developers just really get me as a gamer. You know, they spend a lot of time and money on this. They must just understand where I'm going with it. Also, this game has crashed on me twice. All right, let's just calm down a bit and we'll talk about some of the good things in this game. The exosuit is just tons of fun. <laughs> As you see right now, you just combine the exosuit with like a frosty station or whatever, and you just fucking have these tornado of, uh, ice wind, and you're freezing them at the same time, you're blowing them up. Uh, you also have the zero suit, which you can just use, basically you're just zero, and you're just slicing people away, you're shooting them, you're basically jumping and shoot man. Jump in a shoot, man. I, I, I enjoy this. It's really interesting, really fun. I do hope it does come back. Even though it doesn't make much sense that Frank's able to use combination weapons, they're still one of my favorite things to do in this game. I still have a lot of fun with them. There's a lot of variations between them. Uh, they have some interesting and cool um, christmas theme weapons, which I enjoy. There's like a Jingle Bell kind of launcher thing. It blows up in their face and just has like a jingle to it which is kind of cool. And then you have your basic stuff, like your ice sword, fire sword, simple simple things here and there. Uh, they still have my favorite lightsaber, basically, in there. It's a, it's a laser sword, I believe is what it's called, using uh, a gem and, like, a flashlight. But in this game, it uses uh, symbols. So anytime you find, like, a TV symbol, you can use it to create the, the lightsaber. So the fact that those things are here and they're back and they're stronger than ever, they're very interesting is what I really liked about this game. It's the one thing that I keep coming back for is the interesting weapons and the different ways to kill the zombies and they keep that true to the second game. Although still it is nothing to do with the first game. Dead Rising 4 is better, it's faster, it looks amazing. We have more zombies, more ways to kill them, more combo vehicles, a whole new mystery to solve. We brought back our favorite character, Frank, and we still maintain what was really core to Dead Rising. I think fans are gonna love it.
So in conclusion, this game infuriates me. I love the original series, and the fact that they think this is honoring the original series is more dishonorable and more of an insult than I've ever seen in any video game whatsoever, even more than in Devil May Cry when they rebooted that series. At least that game I enjoyed somewhat. This game I can't enjoy whatsoever. It's just baffling. It's not anything like the original series. I don't know where they're going with this series. The only thing I do know is that they're going to be making three more games and that they're still planning on bringing out the final episode for this DLC, the true ending. And if anything, if I'm correct, it's going to be a linear story. They're not going to give you the multiple endings like the previous game. So this game is no longer what it was in the end, and it's really sad to hear that. So originally, I was going to give this game a 3 out of 10, but I really sat on it and just thought that it was a little too harsh for this game because there is some effort put into this game. Although I don't like how they said they're trying to stay true to the original and is nowhere near that. Uh, Frank's more of an asshole than he ever was before and he isn't really likable. The story isn't likable either. The ending just made me mad. Uh, there were some weird fucking bugs with the zombies. Like All this just kind of adds up. So I'm going to give it a score of a 4 out of 10. I still tell you guys to stay away from this game. Even if you are a Dead Rising fan, I would suggest you pick up Dead Rising 1, 2, off the record, um, any of their DLCs, especially since you can get three of the games, Dead Rising uh, 1, 2, and off the record for $60 for the same price as this game for, uh, you get three games. So definitely pick up those games rather than this, and you'll. And if you have already picked it up, pick up the originals as well. If you've never played them, just compare them. You'll definitely see what I'm talking about. It just has a lot of problems, and the fact that they're going to be making three more of them, maybe they can redeem themselves, and maybe they can come back to what the Dead Rising series is actually about and um, maybe even add more stuff that will even lo love even more. So that's all I have for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Games have to evolve. Right. You can't just keep serving up the same burger year after year after year. You have to put new things out for people. Mm. And I think that's what we've done with Dead Rising. We've focused on the stuff that people love. We've added some new stuff. And we've improved some stuff. <laughs> oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree.